welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about one of my least favorite things to teach with, but I understand that they are necessary, and that is worksheets. Let's talk about them for a second. I am not a big worksheet type teacher. I prefer to teach with hands-on um, approaches using manipulatives. We follow a CPA structure when it comes to all of our math concepts, but I understand that worksheets, they're necessary. We need to use them for graded work. We need to use them for homework or assessments, but worksheets can actually be used for a lot more than just that. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing three ways to make worksheets more exciting and more hands-on. When you are ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and let's dive in and get started. So as I mentioned, I'm not a huge worksheet teacher, but I do like to use them when I'm kind of in a crunch, if I want something just quick and easy, that doesn't take a lot of prep. We are currently working on subtraction with regrouping. I'm gonna be sharing how you can take just a traditional worksheet like this one, and we're gonna spice it up a little bit and how we can make it more hands-on and engaging. Let's take a look at this one. This is comparing differences. What the kids would have to do is they would have to solve each addition problem they would have to write the difference on the shirt and then they would have to compare the difference using symbols. Here's how I would take this and make it a little more fun. Now, if this is something that I want to take a grade on or you know, some sort of assessment, I would not do this. This is just going to be your typical everyday whole group lesson. I'm gonna show you how to play a game called Snowball using this particular worksheet. Now. Before I explain how to play snowball, I do want to preface that the particular group that I have this year, I don't know if they could handle snowball. But in previous years that I've taught, I've had groups that could handle it and it's been fantastic. So I think for this particular activity, you're gonna kind of have to judge it based on the behavior of your class and you're about to understand why. How you play snowball, is exactly this. You're gonna give your kids a worksheet and you're not even gonna tell them that you're about to play a game. You're just gonna say, okay, boys and girls, today we are going to play snowball. I want you to take your math sheet and I want you to actually just crumple it up into a snowball and they're gonna look at you like, what, what? Why, why are you letting us do this? Like we don't have to do our work. They're gonna start cheering and all the things. And so then you're going to say, okay, today we're going to play a game called Snowball. And what you're going to have them do is you are going to have them gently, this is where it comes into play based on the behavior of your kids. Like I said, the kids that I have right now, I don't think they could handle this. But you're going to tell them to gently toss their snowball across the room. You cannot throw the snowball at someone. You can't throw it at someone's head. They're just going to gently either like toss it in the air, throw it across the room. Then once they do that and the kind of the chaos calms down, you're going to say, okay, now I want you to go find a snowball that you did not throw. So they have to find a snowball. I normally say like in the opposite direction of where they're standing. So they're going to go, they're going to pick up a snowball and they are going to carefully open the paper up. I tell them when we do this, wad it up gently, don't rip it. So they're going to open it up. And you can do this two different ways. You can have them solve any problem that's on the paper, or you can have them go in order. So let's say they can solve any problem on the page. I have the difference of seven, the difference of 16, and I compared the differences. Once everyone has solved, then they are going to carefully make another snowball, carefully, not like this and make it, making it all crazy. They were gonna carefully do it. And then the game, it just repeats itself. They're gonna toss the snowball across the room. They will find someone else's snowball, open it up and solve another problem. 
This game repeats until all the problems have been solved on the paper. If you have a class that can handle snowball fight, highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's really fun, it's really engaging, and kids, they love it. Now I wanna show you how you can use a traditional worksheet and play or do an activity called Find Someone Who. How this is gonna work is each kid is going to have their worksheet, no matter what it is, and you're gonna give them a clipboard. And so they'll write their name, and then you can have them pick in, solve any problem on the paper. Then you are going to have them pair up in partners. You can have them do this any particular way. You're gonna have them pair up with a partner. They have to pick any problem on their partner's paper to solve. We're gonna pretend that little Susie is standing right here and Susie is my partner. So Susie's gonna walk up to me. I'm gonna take her paper. She's gonna take my paper. I am gonna pick one of the problems to solve on her paper. So this is subtraction with regrouping using base 10 blocks. There goes my daughter. So I could pick any problem to solve on Susie's paper. I solved it, I wrote the answer, and then I just signed my name in the box. Then I'm gonna give Susie her paper back. She's gonna give me my paper back. And you as the teacher, you are going to say switch. When they switch, they find a new partner and the process repeats. So let's say I am with Johnny now. Johnny is gonna give me his paper. I'm gonna give Johnny my paper and I can pick any box on Johnny's paper to solve. And I'm gonna sign my name in the box and the game, it just repeats until all of the boxes have been filled. Once they have all been filled, then typically I'll have all, everyone go back to their desk and I will review the answers all together. And it's really fun. They like to see like, who got the answer right. And so it's just kind of a fun way to get kids up and moving around the room and also like collaborating with one another. The third game that I want to show you is actually a personal favorite. And this is an activity that I do at my small group table using a traditional worksheet and the game Jenga. Now, this Jenga game, I got this off Amazon. I'm gonna link it below in the description of this video. But the reason why I got this one is because it already has different colored blocks. I've actually used this with a traditional Jenga game and I've done it two ways because I've gone through lots of Jenga sets throughout the years. Is one, I've put a piece of tape or a colored sticker on the end of each piece to make it different colors. And then I had a set that I painted one time. So. You're gonna need a Jenga game, and preferably you want to have the blocks in different colors. What I like about this particular Jenga set here, I'm gonna kind of move it so you guys can see it a little bit better. So you have your Jenga blocks, but it also came with a die that has all the different colors on it. Let me show you how we would play using a traditional worksheet. This particular one, they have to solve the subtraction problem and then they have to color the coffee cup based on if the color is greater than or less than 50. So what I did was I just took colored markers and I put dots on each problem. The colors match the colors of the Jenga board. So what they have to do is they have to take their die and they roll it. So that landed on green. So they can pick any problem on their worksheet that has a green dot. So let's solve 52 minus 33. My answer is 19. Now, if they solve it correctly, then they get to come over to the Jenga board and they get to pick a Jenga piece and it has to be the color that they rolled. So like that's green. Then the next person will go. And so then they'll roll yellow. So they have to solve a problem that is marked yellow.
If they get the answer correct, then they have to pick a Jenga piece. The game repeats until either all of the problems are solved or the tower is knocked down. And there you have it. There are three non-traditional ways that you can incorporate a worksheet into your day that is very low prep and is going to keep your kids highly engaged. I'm going to drop the link to this resource in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment below. You guys have a blessed one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.